They were never meant to last this long. Built in the 1970s, launched with a mission to explore the outer planets, and powered by a technology that's now ancient by today's standards, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are the furthest travelled objects ever made by human hands. Today they drift alone, billions of kilometres from home, trapped in a realm no spacecraft has ever explored before, interstellar space. A place where the sun is just another distant star. But what now? What will happen to these silent emissaries as they drift through eternity? Where will they go? What will become of them in a thousand years? A million years? Or even a billion years from now? You're watching V101 Space. My name's Rob and we're on the final stretch to a million subscribers. If you love space and want to be a part of this incredible journey, hit that subscribe button and let's reach that milestone together. The Voyager mission began with a rare planetary alignment, one that would allow a spacecraft to slingshot between the outer worlds using gravity. Launched 47 years ago, Voyager 1 and its twin Voyager 2 epitomised 1970s high-tech. Their computers, which only have around 68 kilobytes of memory, could process around 8,000 instructions per second, extremely advanced for the 1970s. Compare that to a modern smartphone, however, which has hundreds of thousands of times more memory and can process billions of instructions per second, and you get an idea of how old the tech running these probes is. But despite their limitations, these twin probes made discoveries that changed how we see the solar system forever. They showed us Jupiter's chaotic storm systems, glowing auroras and faint rings. They revealed Saturn's rings, previously countable on the fingers of one hand, to have thousands of ringlets. They captured the first close-ups of alien volcanoes, not on Earth, but on Jupiter's moon, Io. And geysers erupting on Neptune's Triton at temperatures of minus 233 degrees Celsius. And most famously, they introduced us to close-up images of icy moons like Europa and Enceladus. Worlds where life might hide in oceans beneath frozen crusts. The mission consumed over 11,000 work years and became one of humanity's greatest feats of exploration. And somehow, even today, they keep going. The Voyagers were originally designed to last only five years, yet almost five decades later, they are still whispering across the void. There is a common phrase that goes, though miles may lie between us, we're never far apart. This couldn't be any further from the truth when it comes to the Voyager probes. They are incredibly far away. In 2012, Voyager 1 became the first spacecraft to officially cross into interstellar space. Voyager 2 followed in 2018. They had broken free of the sun's protective bubble, the heliosphere, and entered the raw interstellar medium. A realm of faint gas, magnetic fields, and cosmic radiation. The temperatures here hover just above absolute zero. Particles are scarce, but fast and deadly. And yet, these two probes keep moving forward, slowly and silently. Their plutonium power their life source is fading, however, now providing only a trickle of energy, just enough to keep a few scientific instruments working. Systems have been shut down, heaters disabled, instruments turned off one by one by those still managing their power supplies all the way from Earth. Yet, all these years later, a trickle of data still remains. Many ask, why haven't we seen a photo of what interstellar space looks like? 
Why aren't there any images from beyond the sun's reach? Because the Voyagers can no longer take photos. Their cameras were shut off in 1990 to preserve power and the software to operate them has long been erased. In February 1990, Voyager 1 warmed up its cameras for three hours before taking one last look from which it came. It took a series of shots later called the Solar System Family Portrait. The Earth image, which became known as the Pale Blue Dot, was taken just 34 minutes before Voyager 1 powered off its cameras forever. A reminder of how small, fragile and unified we really are. That image marked the end of the Voyager's photographic chapter, but their story was far from over. As of 2025, Voyager 1 is over 24.8 billion kilometers away. Voyager 2, around 20.8 billion kilometers away. Their signals traveling at the speed of light now take more than 23 hours to reach us. Each year, the radio isotope, thermoelectric generator, the power source that runs the probes puts out 4 watts less. Because of this diminishing electrical power, the Voyager team has had to prioritize which instruments to keep on and which to turn off. So with power supplies being meticulously managed, what is the future of the Voyager probes? How long will they last and where will they end up? In some time in the early 2030s, it is expected that the last power cells will fade. No more data, no more updates, just silence. They will go dark forever. And yet, they will keep on moving, but nowhere fast. Not until around 30,000 years from now will the Voyagers pass through the Oort cloud, the shell of comets and icy rubble that orbits the Sun finally waving goodbye to its solar system of origin. At that point, for the first time, the probes will begin to feel the gravitational pull of other stars more strongly than that of our own Sun. If they survive the Oort cloud region, then Voyager 1 will fly within 1.6 light years of a star named Gliese 445 in around 40,000 years from now. But it won't stop, it won't slow down, it will just drift by. Voyager 2, meanwhile, is charting a different course, bound for a star named Ross 248. In roughly 40,000 years again, it will come within 1.7 light years of that distant sun. But the Voyager probes will forever be linked to Earth, even when the signal does finally stop. Because each spacecraft carries something extraordinary, the golden record. A time capsule of Earth's sounds, music, languages and images, just in case someone or something ever found them. Carl Sagan who helped create the golden record once said, the spacecraft will be encountered and the record played only if there are advanced spacefaring civilizations in interstellar space. But the launching of this bottle into the cosmic ocean says something very hopeful about life on this planet. By around 250 million years from now, the solar system and the voyagers alike will complete a full orbit around the Milky Way galaxy. At this stage, if they have managed to avoid any collisions, each probe would likely look extremely battered. Interstellar space is far from an empty void. Dust would have been crashing into the voyagers at a speed of a few kilometers per second. These grains would act as a steady rain that slowly chips away at the metal skin of the spacecraft. A dust grain only one thousandth of a millimeter across will still leave a small vaporized crater when it impacts. And over millions of years, this might slowly eat away at the probes. 
Gravitational influences from enormous clouds of gas, other stars or cosmic bodies might tug at the Voyager's trajectories as well, bending their paths into new orbits and new environments. But despite the onslaught of interstellar materials and potential detours, both probes, although weathered and potentially battered, are likely to survive, at least partially intact, for a span of over 5 billion years, some scientists have predicted. That's when the Milky Way is due to collide with its massive neighbour, the Andromeda Galaxy. Who knows what will happen then? The Voyagers will be caught in a spectacular merger where details are impossible to predict. Depending on their luck, who knows? The Voyagers may be able to ride out trillions of trillions of trillions of years, long enough to cruise through a truly alien cosmos. Trapped in a universe that to us would be completely unrecognizable, and yet, even after all this time, there is a chance that a trace of humanity may still exist. The golden record, etched in copper and plated in gold, shielded behind its aluminium casing, might outlive every other part of the spacecraft. If someday, in some distant star system, someone finds it, they may still be able to decode the sounds of Earth and hear our ancient voice echoing through the cosmos. And in that moment, they will know we once existed. We dreamed, we built, we reached. If you've made it this far, thank you. But did you know that over 86% of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed? And if you're still here, then you're exactly the kind of person I make these videos for. V101 Space is closing in on 1 million subscribers. And if you've enjoyed this journey through the cosmos, I would love for you to be a part of that moment. So please do hit the subscribe button. It really helps more than you know. And if you want to go one step further and help support the channel directly, you can become a V101 member or patron. The links are in the description. It keeps this project going and gives you some nice perks too, including your name at the end of each video and things like behind the scenes access and exclusive content. Either way, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.